Hi, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Moodle programming series. The goal of this series is to develop a custom Moodle block. In this session, we will review, we'll talk a little bit more about the specifics of the upgrade.php file, what's in it. And we'll also just do some basic reviewing of, of a couple things related to what we did in our last session. In addition, I'll show you a couple areas where there's some documentation that will be helpful that we didn't get a chance to look at in the previous session. So it's all related to the database and how Moodle manages it. To get started, let's go ahead and just take a look at our database block and let's take a look at the upgrade.php file. In this function, we have a global reference to a, a global DB object. And with that global DB object, we can request a database manager. And then with that database manager, that gives us access to a data definition API, which I will show you where that documentation is. We can access that through Core APIs and we'll look for data definition language, data definition API. The data definition API is what you can use to create, change, and delete fields and fields, delete tables and fields in the database during upgrades. So let's take a look at this. And here we have, in this page you'll access, you'll have access to the available functions under, under Moodle to be able to handle DB database structures, tables, fields, indexes. And here we have the same code that we have in the other in our database block, the global DB object, and then it requests a database manager. Loads DDL, data definition language manager, and the XML DB classes. So with it, we can see the API down here. Now, now that we have that database manager, we can see the kinds of functions that we can call, which is really useful. You know, if the table exists, create the table, drop the table, rename the table. And these are the ones that we used about adding a field, if the field exists. And then indexes and other some other considerations. So just FYI that this is some documentation that is related to to this and to this to the global database object and also to the database manager. Now these fields where we, we're creating new objects, completely new objects, we need to, the documentation for it is under this creating new DDL functions. XML DB creating new DDL functions. And You know, there's, there's a lot here, but let's just go down to where there's some basic examples. And here you can see the kind of thing that you can do with that API once you create the object, or the object that you can create, and then the API that that provides you with. 
and again that is the, that is re, that's the documentation for this sort of thing here next let's I couldn't find anything on this upgrade save point in the in the documentation so what I what I've done is I've got a copy of 2.6 Moodle 2.6 locally so I just sometimes I just search it for whatever function whatever I am if I just searched for upgrade block say point I'd get probably multiple hits but I want to find where this thing is defined so in this case we're gonna add function to it so we we know that that's the keyword that's used for creating functions. If I wanted to find a class, I would prepend whatever class name I'm looking for with class space and then the name of the class that I'm looking for. And it'll really narrow down the searches. So let's just go ahead and see what that, since we really couldn't find anything, or since I couldn't find anything in the documentation. So here we got a hit. And yeah, let's just go ahead and click on that and take a look at so upgrade block save point it's in the upgrade library ph php and let's just see what it what it what it says about it blocks upgrade save point marks end of blocks upgrade blocks it stores block version resets upgrade time timeout and abort upgrade if user cancels page loading so there you know there we have it we can actually see exactly what it does we could read through the code and see exactly what it does if we need to we don't understand why it's doing something that we don't get so that's another way to if you can't find any documentation on the website you know hit the source code download a copy of the source code locally use some text editor to search and then you know it'll help you it'll just help you gain some insight into into Moodle but the, one of the reasons why they went to all this effort and create these different APIs is so that you can use one API that's going to be able to access multiple database management systems whether it's Oracle or MySQL or Microsoft SQL Server and that you know and, the, and it starts with this install.xml the reason the reason it's in XML is because it is data database agnostic it doesn't care any database can manipulate an XML file it doesn't have to be specific to SQL Server or MySQL or Oracle the only other thing I like to review a little bit more is the when you know why the like when in our first session on the when we create the, the the database the we first installed we used the DB the XML DB editor to go ahead and create the XML file. And then we went in and we deleted the instance. We deleted the block and then we reinstalled it. And the reason we did that was because if we if we didn't uh, if we didn't do that, then we would have to understand this structure before we created before we installed the block for the first time otherwise we would have had to have put all of the upgrade information in this file and that just that just doesn't make any any sense so that's so that's why we we did what we did you know maybe you know after a period of time a person gets used to to this format you could do that you know, have enough examples to where you, you wouldn't have to. 
but it's really not that time consuming to do what we did. I just want to make that clear. I, I felt like I didn't explain that very well. You know, that's really all I have for all the review I wanted to do. I really wanted to show you where the documentation was. And I just want to explain a little more in detail what, you know, was going on in, in this file. In the next session, I think we're going to start with globals, talk about these global objects, you know, how they, where they come from in the boot up process or the bootstrap process. That's about it for now. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.